our longest trusted English newspaper since 1898. Now available digitally. Computer, order the Manila Times Digital Edition. Subscribed. Get the Manila Times Digital Edition for less than 2 pesos and 50 centavos per day when you sign up for one year. The Manila Times, new source of choice, trusted city. Welcome. Thank you for lending an ear to the Voice of the Times for Thursday, May 12, 2022. For today's editorial, Philippines needs a clear economic roadmap now. Later this morning, the Philippine Statistics Authority or PSA will present the first quarter gross domestic product or GDP data for the country. If the incoming president is committed to encouraging investment and economic growth, he should already be prepared to present his own detailed economic policy, preferably within a few minutes of the release of the PSA data. For what it's worth, expectations about the economy's performance in the first three months of the year are modestly positive. Analysts polled by the Manila Times earlier in the week offered growth forecasts ranging from 5.5% to 7%, with most attributing the anticipated gains to greater opening of the economy, election spending, and the low base effect from the 3.9% contraction of the economy in the first quarter of 2021. Whatever the actual figure is, it is significant because it will represent the macroeconomic benchmark of the new administration, the practical final GDP figure of the Duterte administration. The last quarter under Duterte will be the current second quarter, of course, but as of the months of April, May, and June are comprehensively affected by the election and its immediate prelude and aftermath policy action of the outgoing administration has had little to no impact. Thus, the first quarter GDP can be considered a fair starting point for the new administration. The economy is currently facing a number of risks, which are broadly acknowledged by analysts and the outgoing economic team. The potential risk posed by the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic is of course at the top of everyone's mind, as is the catastrophic effect the war in Ukraine has had on fuel prices, food supply and prices, and inflation. The risks are aggravated further by other countries' responses to the same problems. Interest rate hikes by the U.S. Fed and other central banks put pressure on our import prices, demand for our exports, and foreign currency flows. So far, Mr. Marquez has only offered rather vague statements regarding his economic policies, mainly to continue the infrastructure development of the Duterte administration and otherwise improve and strengthen various parts of the economy such as MSMEs and agriculture. That may be adequate for an election campaign. Given the outcome, it certainly seems to have worked well enough, but it has not been enough to quell widespread apprehension among businesses here and abroad, investors, multilateral institutions, and other governments about what direction the Philippine economy will actually take. The uncertainty alone is a factor that can further drag the economy. On Monday, U.S. investment giant J.P. Morgan issued a report putting the Philippines at the bottom of the list of ASEAN countries in terms of investment preference. The report did not name Mr. Marcus or any other candidate for the understandable reason that it was prepared before our election even took place, but the subtext was clear enough. The Philippines, J.P. Morgan said, is facing rising risks from high public debt and surging inflation and would see slower economic growth and shrinking corporate profits as a result. Any prospective investor reading that report, even without any knowledge of the country's politics or controversial aspects of its history, would automatically look elsewhere for a destination for his money. The objective for the new administration, therefore, is to quickly take action to encourage a change in that narrative finding its way to the public and the rest of the world. To his credit, Mr. Marcos seems to understand this, at least in a general sense. 
Although the subject obviously causes him some discomfort, the presumptive president-elect during the campaign did acknowledge the skepticism the country's uncertain future. His name and the history attached to it inspire, gamely stating that the only way to prove them, the skeptics, wrong is to prove them wrong. The most critical area in which to prove them wrong is in the economy, and the time to prove them wrong is now. Any delay will simply add breadth and complexity to the economic challenges that must be faced and prolong lingering discontent and frustration among the Filipino people about their daily struggle to make ends meet. And that's the editorial for Thursday, May 12, 2022. For more news and information, get a copy of the Manila Times on print. Subscribe to its digital edition or log on to www.manilatimes.net. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. And listen to the Voice of the Times.